Hey guys, Shamar Crossfield here. Welcome back to the channel. First of all, Dome is my hair. This is not what you guys clicked on this video to see. And also, um, I'm recording this at night time. The lighting isn't the best and I apologize. Hopefully I can do some color grading or something in the edit. But yeah guys, today I'm going to show y'all how I edit my videos and thumbnails. You know, so um, let's just get right into it. Alright, so first things first guys, when I'm editing, I'm not usually editing on this laptop, but it's still the same software. I use DaVinci Resolve 17. Alright, so once I open up DaVinci Resolve 17, this is basically what I see. Right now it's kind of blank. So let's create a new project. We're going to call this new project, how I edit my videos and then it opens up to this window now i'm gonna import some media in here i have some clips from uh, the vlog from yesterday so i'm gonna piece those together um i'm not gonna edit the full video i'm gonna show you all the basics just about three clips as you guys know i have the intro and the outro i'm gonna import those as well and i generally import a ba a black background as well just in case because you know you never really know when I'm gonna need it. First things first, I always drop in the, my intro. Even if it's a case where later on, where later on I'm gonna need to like drop in um, some preview clips at the beginning of the video before the intro rolls, I always just drop the intro just to set the mood, you know. Then I place the next clip on the timeline. In this case, it's this clip of me dancing. Sometimes editing, gets glitchy so then i trim up you know i use this editor and i just like slide use a slider find where i want the video to start and i press i on the keyboard and then when i want it to stop i press the o and then i drag and drop it onto the timeline generally when i'm starting the videos i like to just jump right into it another thing with me i don't make my videos long i don't like making them long because one thing that i try to do is keep your guys's attention if it is that i'm like rambling or ranting or being redundant and repeating things that i've already said i tend to literally just cut just because you know if it's not adding to the continuity of 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 the general idea then i like to cut it up Let's drop this onto the timeline as well. Some random clips. Gonna take some quick flicks of my girl Shanshan. I'm gonna drop this whole clip in there and then cut it up on the timeline. In 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 DaVinci Resolve as well, I can see like the audio levels, so I know when no one is talking and when I begin talking again. So I usually just cut out that moment of silence. So unless it's intentional, there ain't gonna be a moment of silence. I was, I was taking the back. Yeah, and then after she said, say, oh, thank you, I'm going to cut it. I'm going to drop in this black screen because I have a little idea. Um, and then, yeah, and then I'm going to drop in the outro. Fun fact, you guys probably do not know this, but my outro actually has a song attached to it, like a, a little tune. Here, here's it. Yup. But I, 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 it's not that I hate it, but I always, always mute it. I always change the different music that I use in my videos because I don't necessarily like using the same music track over and over again. All right, guys, so right now we've pretty much done the rough cut. We finished what's called a rough cut. That's what I call it when I have cut up the clips, um, kept whatever clips I need to keep in there. Once I'm finished with the rough cut, I take a break. Because you see a video that is like 12 minutes, that might take me 6 hours total of editing. Alright, so let's get back to this. My idea right now is I'm gonna like zoom it in while I'm dancing. No real fancy meaning behind it, I just, I don't know, I just like, I just like it. <laughs> I think now we're ready to start putting text over the images. So let's go into titles and text. Oop, yeah. Titles and text, just drop that onto the timeline. And I'm gonna change this text to how to edit videos like Shamar. One thing that I hate about DaVinci Resolve is I can't use emojis. I used to use all kinds of different fonts, like I used to, I used to download them, but I realized that, hey, keeping it simple, it goes a long way. So nowadays, I don't really put in any fancy text in the videos. There's this code of yellow that I like to use, it's FF 
C E zero A. Yes, yeah. So that's the that's the color code that I usually use, and that's the yellow that I always have in my videos. The yellow color for the text. How to edit videos like Shamar. Yeah, simple as that. Because I'm kind of off screen and my face isn't showing on the screen, I like to put a little you know, caption there. Or Chanel be looking. Right there, I stop saying it, so I'm gonna move on. And then, right here, I'm gonna put something that's uh, something funny, just to make sure that I cut her out. I have a girlfriend. Stop flirting. Just some random, the most random thing about. To me, this is the funnest part. Adding the music. Adding the music to my videos, it's one of the most crucial parts, and it always is just the icing on the cake. The music is what really gives the video life. It's what gives the video a vibe and it's what makes it watchable. So what I do is I have a video, a, a, a folder, right? With the different music I use. Um, copyrighted and non-copyrighted. As it relates to non-copyrighted music, I have a lot to choose from. But I'm constantly looking for new music to add, to be honest. Um, right now, from this video, I'm kind of getting the vibe of beer, whole lot of money, instrumental. You guys have heard that instrumental a billion times before in my videos, but this is how it sounds. Rise the A on the B. Bop bop. And I move it under my timeline. And I start it right on the beat. <laughs> And then the music just gives it a vibe, you know, it just gives it a big, big vibe. And then, no, uh, when the music, when I, depending on the vibe that I'm going for, the music, I don't know what better, what was better to describe it as a vibe. When I'm really, like, feeling the music and I want it to come at an abrupt end because I think it will be fitting, there's a certain sound always oh, in this folder. It's actually my whoosh transitions folder. And I have sound effect three, which is basically, the whoosh, I get that whoosh. When I want something to abrupt to end abruptly, so that it can grab your attention for the next scene, I use that effect. Basically. Hi guys, look who's here. It's hi, more friends in there. And then now, after I say like a, a phrase, I generally add a little subtle, a more subtle um, music track. There's a certain vibe that I'm going for right now, like a song. A song I go. That's the ball in instrumental. Yeah, adjust the volume a little bit. Not by much, just a little bit. I'm gonna take some quick flicks. And then right there, when Chanel was about to be like, oh, thank you, I'm gonna. Add an, a sound effect. There's like these different impact sounds. Yeah, sorry about that. My camera battery died. I added this little effect, this little sound effect. Listen. And now, time for the in, the outro song, which will be the same song. Generally, I use the same song that I started off with, or the last song that I played in the video. In this case, I'm gonna use the song that I started off with. And yeah, guys, that's the <laughs> that's the basic, very very basic run and up how I edit the video so let's watch it all Hi guys look who's here it's Hi more friend Chanel I'm gonna take some quick flicks of my girl Shan Shan. Cause Shan will be looking nice today. Huh? And yeah, honestly guys, that's the basic rundown of how I edit um, the video. Am I missing anything? I don't think so. Yeah, I'm just gonna save this video. The whole rundown of how I edit my videos, guys. Like, <sighs> this was just for this video, so it could be a quick video. But generally, when I'm editing, as I said earlier, it takes me hours 
upon hours to edit. I had different effects, I had different titles. Um, I'm always like resizing, sometimes I zoom in, sometimes I'm copying, sometimes I have to blur, you know, all these different things that I have to do for these videos. So, and on top of that, I don't know, maybe I'm just generally a slow editor, but that's really because I like to make sure that the video that I'm putting out, it meets my own standards, you know? So I'm hoping that this video too will be one of those because this video is a little bit rushed, I have to admit. But let's move on to the second part of the video, which is how I edit my thumbnails. I'll tell you, I use the app Pixart and Fonto. Oh, I also use Lightroom. I use Lightroom a lot. So I'm gonna try and find that picture that I'm gonna work with. Okay, so first I'm gonna open up Lightroom. Find that find that picture to import. Okay, so what I usually do is I try to fix the lighting first. You know, so I might turn up the exposure a little bit. I might also add to the contrast just to make it more realistic. I usually like to turn down the highlights so that my skin doesn't feel all blown out and I turn up the shadows. Turning up shadows is actually crucial. Sometimes I like to adjust the black, but you know, nothing too serious, nothing too serious. And another thing that I do is I go into the color. I don't really need to change the color right now. There's not much to really emphasize, but let me add a little bit to the saturation. And um, for details, I usually like to sharpen the image a little bit more. You know, so once that's done, and I'm satisfied with what it looks like exporting to my camera roll. And then I'm going to Pixar. Hop on over into Pixar and the first thing that I like to do is choose a background. I'm not choosing any, any, any random background. I like it when the background matches the theme of the video. But generally, the, the background will always get blurred out in my video thumbnails. It doesn't really matter exactly like the quality of the background, you know, it just needs to be something nice and appealing. Um, so right away, let's blur this out. I press blur. Most of the times I adjust it like this, but you know, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna go with this. So yeah, it's blurred out and it's in 16 by 9 ratio. Now what I want to do is I want to add the photo that we just, um, that we just edited and I want to cut out. I literally have to cut out the image. And guys, this, this does take a long time. There have been times when I'm about to start all over from scratch and I use my finger and I manually um, and I manually cut this picture out. You see, I use my finger, I take the time for all my thumbnails. All my thumbnails. I do know that there are shortcuts that exist and do know that there are better websites out there that can do this stuff. I prefer to save on the quality of the picture by just, you know, taking my time out to just manually um, do this. I'm not gonna do that right now. Because I did that in a previous thumbnail, all I have to do is go into the sticker section, go into like collection because it saves whenever I do a cutout. And best believe it's right there. Right there, the cutout that I did the last time. And I put it over the picture. And, and yeah, that's. That's how it looks. What I'm gonna do now is I add a border. Add a little shadow as well. I have my shadow be a certain color. It's this color right here. I position it directly behind of the picture. I turn up the blur and I turn up the opacity to kind of make it seem like it's glowing in a sense. And it usually looks really nice. I like to add a little stuff to the background um, to kind of make it extra, just for some context, let me show you guys what the actual thumbnail turned out to be. This picture right here is the end result of the thumbnail that I made for that video, the IQ test video. You know, I added in the little question cards at the, at the back, put in a little sticker of some question signs, um, added a little arrow in the background, a lot of things, but that, that I just did was a basic rundown. So let's go back into Pixar. I'm going to save this with this um, thumbnail, how it is right now. Then we're going to open up Fonto. I'm sure you guys have heard of Fonto at some point. Open it up in Fonto and I'll type in like, say, IQ test. And yeah, I'll put it up there. I generally like to add a little stroke to it, meaning a border around the, the, the characters. Put up the shadows. Increase the blur a little bit to give it that, you know, pop, like it's popping out in a sense. Sometimes if I feel so compelled, I'll actually like make the picture see, the, the, the text seem like it's coming from behind of, you know, an object. So for example, I'm going to use the erase feature, which is something that I had to pay for, but you know, 
Some things are worth and take my time. Literally have to take my time. And I cut it out. Ooh, that was a little bad, but it's just a demonstration. So I'm not stress on myself. And yeah, no, it looks like it's a tile right behind of the computer, like you know. So this is a nice okay effect that I like to do. Don't overdo it. Once I feel like I'm done with a thumbnail, I'll save it. And guys, this is the thumbnail we just created, so that's generally how I create my thumbnails, you know, Pixar, Fanta, and Lightroom sometimes. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope it was educational. I hope you guys took, can take value from it if you're watching it at this point. That means that you were actually really interested in knowing how this goes. I'm tired. Thank you guys for watching. Um, Shamar Crossfield. <laughs>